Hi, I'm Anthony and I'm here with Cyber8.it and we're going to talk today about memory and RAM. What is RAM? RAM is actually another acronym. We like to use those in computers a lot. And this one actually stands for Random Access Memory. RAM basically allows our CPU to interact and basically store temporary information so that it can process that information and make logical decisions and basically allow us to perform functions on our computer. Now a lot of times when people think memory they think of their hard drive and storage and where they actually save software to on their computer. RAM though actually allows our computer to take that stored information and temporarily pull it into a more accessible place for it to work with. Um, in this case random access memory. Um, now, random access memory is actually volatile, which means that when we turn off our computer, anything that's stored in RAM disappears, goes away. That's why when, say, you're working on a Microsoft Word project and you're typing it up, if the power goes out and it's not saved and you don't have a backup system in place, then that disappears. It's not because the computer uh, never had it in the first place, it's because it was stored in RAM. And once you turn off the computer and turn it back on, that goes away. So when we think of volatile memory, we normally think of the type of memory that we have on, say, a RAM chip. Now, there are other types of memory on our computer that we have to be aware of. Say, for example, on our CPU. Now, our CPU, as we know, is a chip on our motherboard that we can generally say is like the brain of our computer. Um, it provides processing of information, calculations, and it needs, it only does those calculations. Um, it doesn't really store any memory uh, in bulk. But it does, however, store a bit of memory in what's called a SRAM, a static RAM. Now that static RAM is a lot faster than what we think of as typical RAM, and it's uh, also static, which means that we don't have to be constantly refreshing it. It will stay static as long as it has a charge to it. That SRAM is actually located on the L1, L2, and L3 cache on our CPU. Um, now when we see our CPU from the outside, we usually just see one solid chip. But there's more going on on the inside, different components and pieces and parts working together and a couple of those parts include the L1, L2, and L3 caches that are working on our CPU. Now it would be nice if we could take that static RAM and just make it big and put it on our computer and use just that because again it's a lot faster, it's a lot uh, it's a lot less volatile because we don't have to be constantly updating it. However it's very expensive so it becomes impractical for us to do that. So we have to enter dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAM is the type of RAM that we think of as general computer RAM. The sticks that we place in our computer and can update as need be. Now that dynamic RAM has to frequently be char recharged by our computer power. This keeps the memory current and this keeps it up to date. That's the difference between again the dynamic RAM and the static RAM. The static RAM as long as it has a charge it'll the memory will stay there. The dynamic RAM has to keep refreshing. It has to keep having those frequent charges. Now, the static RAM or the dynamic RAM has changed a little bit over the years. We have gone from uh, SD RAM, which is one of the types of RAM you'll actually need to know for the exam. Um, we don't have an SD RAM card here, but the SD RAM is actually stands for synchronous dynamic RAM. Now it's considered synchronous because it actually stays in sync with our computer's uh, clock cycle. This helps the uh, memory to act a little bit better and act a bit more stable. Moving on from SD RAM, we moved on to Rambus. Rambus is a step up in the type of RAM that we're using. Uh, now Rambus is a bit more expensive than SD RAM because Rambus was actually a, uh, a memory that was, I you say, uh, copyrighted. It was actually uh, a design by the Rambus company. So it's a bit more expensive because of those licensing fees that have to be paid to Rambus when the memory was created. 
Now, SD RAM and Rambus are mem memories that we do need to be aware of, say, for this exam, but they're not ones that we'll, we'll really encounter as much anymore uh, because they're a little bit older RAM types. More that we'll encounter now are DDR, DDR2, and DDR3. Now, DDR, DDR2, and DDR3 are all uh, considered SD RAMs because they're synchronous with our, uh, with our system clock. But they're a bit faster than just standard SD RAM, and in particular, it's actually double the speed. DDR is double data rate. So DDR would be twice the speed of SD RAM. Again, because DDR stands for double the data rate. DDR2 would be two times DDR. However, a little bit of a disadvantage with DDR2 is there's a little bit more latency. So while we have twice the data transfer as DDR, there's more latency with that data transfer. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. DDR3, however, is two times the transfer rate of DDR2 and less latency than DDR2. So it's a bit of an it's quite a bit of an improvement over DDR2 into DDR3. When we think of our RAM sizes, there's two major RAM sizes that we'll encounter today. We'll have DIM, which stands for Dual Inline Memory Module, and we also have SODIM, which stands for Small Outline Dual Inline Memory Module. Out of the two, SODIM is obviously a lot visibly smaller, and the reason for that being SODIM is usually for laptops, and DIM we'll see in desktop computers. As an example, we have our DIM module here. And you can see that installing RAM is actually a very straightforward process. It really just slides into the computer board, into the slots, and just locks into place with the latches on either side. SODIM is very similar. We have a laptop base here, and where you remove the bottom cover, and there are actually clips that hold in the memory, which you slide in place. Unfortunately, this memory is actually the incorrect size for this one. So, that one is actually not going to fit in there. Again, you don't want to fit any type of memory that seems like you would have to force it. Um, because, especially with computers, anything that you would have to force typically means that you're going to have a problem. It's going to, might end up in breaking. Now, when you're fitting memory into the computer, DDR, DDR2, and DDR3 aren't all just interchangeable. You can't take a computer that has uh, DDR3 capable memory and just, uh, or DDR capable memory and then buy DDR3 memory and just put it in there. Um, it also has to do with the motherboard specifications and what the motherboard allows. DDR SD RAM is a 184 pin DIM RAM. So similar to the module that we showed a second ago, um, there are 184 pins, and then the key, the uh, notch in the memory, is in a certain place that it won't let you put the other types of memory in there if you tried to force them. Uh, it wouldn't fit. Because if it did let you, then you would end up with a computer that crashed because the memory wouldn't be, it wouldn't be supported by that motherboard. DDR2 memory is actually a 240 pin connector, and it's also dim. And DDR3 is also 240, but the notch that's in the memory module is in a different place. So while they're both the same size, and they both have the same number of pins, the notch is offset differently, so you can't take a, you can't accidentally take a DDR2 memory module and place it in the DDR3 slot. There's a reason for all the notches. It's not just to make it frustrating, make it not be able to fit memory into certain places. The different types of memory aren't, again, aren't interchangeable. And if your motherboard doesn't support DDR3, and you tr uh, tried to put a DDR3 module in there, it'll it stops you for a reason.